Uh, my name is Fran Agulto with my co-pilot, Grace Erickson. And in today's event, we're going to give you an overview of basically Headless 101. So think of this as first day of school and where we're meeting you at is, you might you might have been using Headless for a while, but this is also very high level, very foundational um, standpoint of Headless WordPress. Now, next slide. Just an etiquette alert. As it says on the slide, gonna read it right off. Please be excellent to one another, as Bill and Ted said on their excellent adventure. It's an 80s reference movie, if anybody <laughs> is as old as me. Uh, we are recording. This event will be available on our at WP Engine Builders YouTube channel post event. So, you know, if you if you wanted to r run something back, you can, but it is being recorded. So be kind to all share demo resources as well that we that we share. Cool. So what we're going to cover today is we're going to talk about why you would choose to use headless WordPress. Um, we'll understand the key components of a headless architecture and what makes it different from a traditional architecture. Then we'll set up a headless WordPress backend, fetch data using WP GraphQL, and then use that data to render dynamic UI components using React and FaustJS. Okay, and next slide. And this is me, so you might be asking yourself, well, hey, Fran, why are you so stoked and why use headless WordPress? Well, here's a couple of reasons why. So of course, WordPress is renowned for its huge content management system capabilities, but it does operate on a traditional monolith architecture that doesn't leverage the latest web technologies uh, to, the, to the fullest, right? So transitioning to headless WordPress setup introduces a decoupled architecture where WordPress actually serves merely as the content repo. And then you access it via APIs through plugins, which we'll, we'll, we will talk about, um, and then this approach allows the use of modern, faster programming languages and frameworks on the front end. Significantly, it enhances essentially the site performance by loading only the necessary data and assets. Now, also the other thing, y'all, is Headless WordPress not only optimizes performance, but also broadens the, pos um, the possibilities of content distribution. And this is, I think, one of the coolest things about composable architecture, Jamstack, all that, all the buzzwords, if you will, that is um, associated with decouple or headless. Um, because essentially with its API driven nature, you're turning everything into an API data wise, headless WordPress can seamlessly serve content, content across various platforms and devices, right? Whether it be websites, mobile apps, uh, kiosks, uh, IoT devices, your UI and your Tesla car, whatever. This multi-channel distribution capability, capability does ensure that your content is more accessible, providing a cons consistent experience across different um, touch points. So the other thing too, y'all, is, okay, so you're probably wondering, okay, so this is not PHP on the front and back anymore. It's not fully server-side rendered. So regarding security, right, a headless approach, you would think inherently does enhance the safety uh, of your digital presence because it decouples the front uh, presentation layer from the WordPress backend. So it reduces surface um, area of attacks by nature. So the WordPress admin area often, which is often a target for web attacks, is not directly linked to the site's front end. Okay, so making it less vulnerable to common um, security threats. Now the architecture does eliminate um, all security concern. It does not, sorry, it does not eliminate uh, caveat all security concerns, but it does significantly mitigate risk associated with direct access to the CMS, right? Um, and then lastly, headless WordPress does allow devs and content creators to leverage like live in unison, right? Best of both worlds kind of thing. Um, so the superior CMS experience of WordPress essentially is awesome, right? It has it has everything in there, and the UI is very friendly. Um, it's what you see is what you get kind of thing, um, and then it allows for the advanced dev experience for the capabilities of the front end 
technology, such as Next.js, as Aaron uh, mentioned. So this synergy kind of empowers teams to like essentially, you know, build fast, secure, um, and build fast and secure and highly interactive web apps tailored to their um, specific needs, whether you're like an agency or just a small mom and pop shop or just maintaining your own website. Next slide, your turn, Grace. Okay, so in order to understand what a headless WordPress website architecture is, um, it's important to first make sure that we're all on the same page about what a traditional WordPress architecture looks like. Um, so in this traditional WordPress architecture, um, the CMS, WordPress in this case, would handle both the front end and the back end of the website. So in this architecture, the publisher will create and manage content um, such as blog posts and pages inside of WordPress. The developer will write code to control how the site looks and functions using PHP and the WordPress theme API. And then WordPress will generate the HTML page that is sent to the website visitor. So in this coupled architecture, WordPress provides the CMS capabilities to publishers, but it's also responsible for serving HTML page to HTML pages to the website visitors. But in a headless architecture on the next slide. Next, Grace. Okay. So in this headless, a headless CMS uses a decoupled architecture. So the front end and back end are managed separately. So in this headless architecture, the publisher will still create and manage content in WordPress just the same as they would in a traditional WordPress architecture. But the developer can now write code to control how the site looks and functions in JavaScript, as well as using WP GraphQL or the REST API to pull that data out of WordPress. Um, a framework such as Faust.js, React, or Vue, um, or any of the other JavaScript frameworks is often used to power this front-end application. And so then the front-end JavaScript application generates and serves the HTML pages that are sent to the website visitor, so unlike in a traditional architecture, WordPress is no longer responsible for generating any of those HTML pages. Oh, is it my turn now? Yep. Okay, <laughs> awkward transition pause. Okay, so now, as I promised y'all, let's talk about the API layer, the application programming interface. So the interaction to exchange content between the WordPress backend and the front end JavaScript app happens through APIs. Um, mainly, the two options for the API layer are WordPress REST, REST API or WP GraphQL. Now, just to differentiate the two, the REST API comes bundled with WordPress at its core, at WordPress core. Uh, however, the data access pattern that it requires can be slow because REST requires each resource to have its own endpoint. For example, it would require multiple round trips to reconstruct a fully modeled host. If you wanted to get a post content, author, category, date, it would require four separate API calls to that endpoint. Now, in contrast, for those of you that aren't familiar, because I, I would think, honestly, like I would think if you're coming from a traditional WordPress background, you know what, you know, you know what REST is, right? But um, here's GraphQL and WP GraphQL, which allows us to ask for post content, author, and category all in one request. Because of this, WP GraphQL is um, my and our preferred uh, API layer. It is a free plugin. Uh, big ups to my man, Jason Ball, who created it, that provides an extendable GraphQL schema and API for your WordPress site. So it's free. WP GraphQL is faster than the REST API because it gets the exact data that you ask for and results in fewer functions executing through the query optimization, less data downloading, more effi efficiently, and multiple resources included in a single request. Now, again, just... a for those of you that aren't from familiar, uh, GraphQL stands for Graph Query Language. It's actually a query language. Um, essentially, what it does is it um, exposes any database, any any data layer. It doesn't matter if it's your Salesforce data, 
It doesn't matter if it's your Shopify data, whatever. If that data has a GraphQL endpoint, it exposes it as a structure with its own pattern of like nodes and edges and relationships between them. And you can literally drill down into the node at the end, at the very end of the leaf node to ask what you want for, for fields, excerpts, data, all that stuff. So it's, it's, it's pretty awesome. Okay. Now the front end choices. Now here's something that is kind of interesting in this whole node ecosystem and, and headless WordPress world that I think is because fun fact, guys, every five seconds, a front end JavaScript framework is born. In fact, can just actually, you can go on um, X, form, formerly known as Twitter, and find like 10 of those right now. Just kidding. Okay, so what it is, is it's a headless architecture gives the freedom to choose from any front end tech stack with JavaScript frameworks being the most popular, right? So some of the most popular front end JavaScript frameworks include React, as we were talking at the beginning of the call, um, Vue and Svelte. Um, new frameworks are being released all the time. So the list is like nowhere near finished. It's literally like, I I mean, you think I'm joking y'all, but yeah, every 10 seconds, there's like a new one born. So many of these JavaScript frameworks are used in conjunction with the meta frameworks built on top of them, right? So that, the, 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 that adds solutions for things like routing, server-side rendering, and and much more stuff. So um, like just for the comparison, um, when you guys are trying to wrap your head around this, you're like, wait, well, React. And so React is the foundation. And then the meta framework on top of that is Next.js. Vue is the foundation. And then on top of that, the meta framework is Nuxt, right? And then Svelte and Svelte Kit, so on and so forth. So these are the, uh, this is the new world you're entering with the front end uh, node ecosystem. It gets quite hairy, but it's quite fun, actually. Yes. Um, so WP Engine also has created lots of tools to make headless WordPress development easier. Um, so three of these that we'll be using today are Faust, WP, GraphQL, and Local. Um, so Faust is actually a JavaScript framework that was built on top of React and Next. Um, so it was created specifically to support headless WordPress web applications. Um, it does things like support authentication and post previews out of the box. Um, it provides convenient built-in React hooks for accessing WordPress data um, and lots of other things. So that we would actually use on top of other JavaScript frameworks like React. Um, and then WP GraphQL is a free open source WordPress plugin that provides an extendable GraphQL schema and API for any WordPress site. Um, so that is the thing that allows you to really get the WordPress data out of WordPress and into your JavaScript app. And then local is a tool that lets you spin up a WordPress site locally on your machine. So you don't need to have one live to be doing um, development on it. Um, and so I think Fran will be spinning up a local site or already did maybe, but give you a view of the UI of that today. So I think next we'll start talking about what we are building. Okay, uh, pretty stoked. Here's my favorite part because um, we're just gonna essentially spin up um, a Faust uh, JS application through its NPM package. And then once we sp uh, spin up that, Grace is gonna walk me through uh, building in the Next.js pages directory, um, which is Next Next.js 12 on top of Faust JS, a landing page, which will expose uh, titles and excerpts of a blog and those titles are going to be clickable, which will add client side navigation into a dynamic route, which will expose a single post detail page in relation to that title and that excerpt. So it is demo time. So let me get rid of this slide deck here. And live demos are always fun, y'all. So hopefully nothing breaks on us. But if it does, then you'll get to sit here and watch Grace and I debug. So very cool. All right, so here's a couple of things just 
some prerequisite things I did. Um, as Grace said, we're using uh, local by fly or uh, flywheel. Is it still flywheel or WP engine though? Anyway, um, we're using local and uh, by fly flywheel and WP engine. I'll just say that. So free uh, WordPress dev environment. And essentially, uh, if I pull up the, this is what the UI looks like. It's pretty cool, I think. Um, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, when you, if you've never used local before, it's so cool because the um, there's a bunch of uh, pop-up wizards that just kind of prompt you through spinning up a site, and then literally it's on your local machine, and you it's totally free. Like it's yeah, and then you can just start like playing around with stuff and like developing like Grace said, I isolated development environment. I've already spun one up. So let me go back to my WP admin um, for local. And then the second thing that Grace talked about uh, that we're going to be using today, um, which I've already downloaded, um, is the WP GraphQL plugin. Essentially, WP GraphQL, like uh, we said, is the API layer that we're going to be communicating to from the front end to grab our WordPress data from this WordPress backend here. Now, uh, basically, what what Jason made is is you when you download this plugin, you're turning your um, Word uh, WordPress uh, backend into a W in a, into a GraphQL server, essentially, right? And um, what I was gonna show you guys is that when you download this plugin, there's a couple of things that populate. So on the left hand side of the hamburger menu in your WordPress admin, you get, um, of course, your settings, which I've already um, pre uh, checked everything that you would need. And uh, don't worry, um, we're not going to, we don't have time to go over every one, but uh, we will leave collateral and documentation and whatnot um, in the YouTube description uh, when we post this on our YouTube channel so that you guys can go to it. Also, um, feel free to ask us in Discord, which we'll leave that at the end for um, questions. You'll you'll be able to see the link. Now, that populates, and you you set up your um, settings. And one of my favorite things, and again, this is um, why this is like super cool. I think about GraphQL. Not this is just not only WP GraphQL, but GraphQL in general is the IDE that it has. Right. So. Um, there's a query composer and literally, like I said, when I was talking on the slide, y'all literally exposes your uh, WordPress schema, uh, your data schema, and um, the, the documentation is all set up here. And yeah, sure, you can hand write um, your object and your query and whatnot and your um, query variables right here. Um, but you can also just kind of click and point on what data you want. And, and then when you... Um, I already have one set up here, but when you press play, uh, it tells you what data, what you're asking for. It spits it back out right here. Exactly. The title and content from this sample page. So, so th these are the things that populate with the graphical uh, graph WP GraphQL uh, plugin. Uh, the second thing that Grace had mentioned is we will be using Faust JS for our front end framework, which is a Grace, would you call it a meta squared framework? <laughs> Did I just invent a word meta meta? <laughs> sure. Okay, cool. Meta meta framework. There's so much meta. Um, so uh, so Faust JS is essentially, like Grace said, a an open source JavaScript framework built on top of Next.js to make headless WordPress development more seamless and easier out of the box with its boilerplate package. Okay. So with that, it has its own plugin, right? So because like, you know, when you're using headless WordPress, it's not the um, it's not WordPress that's rendering PHP on the front end on the from its server to the front end anymore. You're using the JavaScript framework, so you need a way to point it to whatever your front end URL is. In this case, with Faust, it kind of just like has this GUI that you there's your front end URL and I've already pasted it in. In our case, localhost 3000 is the port that um, any React or Next.js app when you spin up the dev server um, 
points to in the um, URL bar. And then uh, your secret key is for um, post previews. Again, we won't, we don't have time for that today, but we'll point you to the docs so that you can make an authenticated request and see a post preview. Um, and yeah, and there's all the um, features that it has, and you just hit the sa you save your changes, and it's um, and it's good to go. This will point now when I spin up um, the uh, dev server to the front end. Okay. All right, Grace. So let's do this. What should um, walk me through? So I'll be your, um, I'll be your, uh, you're going to be my GitHub co-pilot today. Okay. So what, what, what do I do first? To, uh, okay, teach me. So the first thing we'll need to do is to spin up a new Faust project. Okay. Um, so to do that, there's a command that's in the Faust documentation that will just kind of spin up a starter project. Okay, let me look that up real quick. Is it get started here? Oh, this one, Grace? Yep. Should I just copy this? Yep. Okay. Okay, I'm in the directory I want this project to be, so just paste this in. Yep. Okay. Then we can name it whatever you want. Okay. Um, headless newbie. How about that? Okay. So what what's going on here is it's downloading all the files from the repo and it's NB, npm package. I'll take a little bit here. Also, that written me, I'll, um, I always um, don't judge, but sometimes I'll just put on net new uh, Faster Next packages because I just think this is cool. <laughs> All the purple and the green of them. Okay, oh, Grace, what do I do? Um, so then we can also copy the .env.local.sample file um, to say, yeah, that command right there. So that's just copying it into a new file called .env.local. Um, and so that's where we need to set up those environment variables that will connect it to Faust. Okay, okay. So let me change my directory into the project we just made. Let me clear everything out. And then, so just like that, Grace? Yep. Okay. Then what? All right. So then we'll go over to the Faust app that we just made in a code editor. Okay. I'm using VSC, Visual Studio Code. Let me open that up. Okay, I'm in here now, Grace. Nice. So then in the .env.local file we just made, open that up, um, and we'll need to replace the next WordPress URL and the secret key value. Okay. Um, okay. So just go back to local then? Or? Yeah, to the WordPress, the local WordPress site. Okay, so I'll go back to local. Whoops, sorry. The WP admin, sorry which is right here. Okay. And then um, you uh, said no. it's the general because we're using the yeah, yeah. the key is the WordPress URL, not the grant. Yeah. There's the key. We'll post to the value here. Okay. And I'll save that. Okay. I'll also need to replace that file secret key with that plugin, um, the plugin okay. key that it showed on that other screen. So do, I'll just grab that from that, okay, from here? Yep. Okay, okay. And then we'll have to uncomment out that line as well. 
Okay. That should be good. Right? Yep. Looks good to go. Um, okay. Okay. So then what we want to build out is a blog page. Um, and so to do that, we will need to get the data from all of the posts that are currently in your WordPress backend. Okay. Uh, we can start out by building a query that will return all of that information in the um, graphical IDE on the WordPress admin. Okay, I'm going to do this because I have already a query here. So I'm going to add a new query here. And we're going to pull this up. I think you have to hit that, the like arrow on the left of it. There it is. There it is. Okay. Now I'm just going to, here, I'm going to do this by hand, but it should be, actually, why don't I just show off the power of the. Um, yeah. So we'll want to get hosts okay. on the new query. I think I meant that wrong because I'm still in this, but. You deleted the new query. Oh, uh, no. Here, I'm going to add new query. Yeah, now I'm in it, right? Yep. Okay, okay. so I'm going to expand on that posts. And then nodes. So posts and then posts have nodes. Okay. And then on each post, we'll want to grab the title. Where is the title? Okay. Um, we want excerpt. And then we'll also grab the database ID. I think it's up here somewhere, Grace. There it is. Okay. And then the URI. Perfect. That's what I was thinking. So can I go ahead and press play? Nice. And then let me just there's our data right there. All the post. And this is all, yeah. These are all the posts that I put in. Perfect. Okay. Cool. So then we will copy that query that we just made. And we'll want to put that into our Faust app. Let me just give it a new query operator name. I'll just call it get post. And you want me to copy this? Copy? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Cool. And then we'll go back over to our Faust app in VS Code. Okay. Headless newbie. Okay. All right, so then we'll need to create a new page inside of the pages directory where we can build out this blog page. Um, okay. Okay, Grace, I have a quick question for you, just for like, you know, um, about Faust um, built on top of Next. So um, how does it work? What um, I drop a file in here, and is that the route? Yep. Yep, so that'll just route to the slash blog if we name it blog. Okay, so should I just name it blog? Yeah. Okay. Blog.js. Blog, and this will be a JavaScript file, yep. .js, okay. Okay, so then we can just paste that query in for now. Okay. Do you want me to make it a, that query a, a const for, uh, as a const, or just paste it in? Um, I was going to just paste it and then build the const around it, but you could do it either way. Okay. Okay, so then we have that query, but as Fran said, to make it um, readable by our app, um, we need to make it a const. Okay, query. let me make um, And we can call it get posts. I'm going to use underscore here. And then we'll also need to wrap it in a template literal, so using GQL from Apollo Client. 
Um, so we can do GQL and then template literals. Template. Yep. And then also add a template literal to the end. Um, and so then we'll also need to import GQL from Apollo client above there. Can I just online one or is yep. this cool? Okay. Perfect. Nice. And then, yeah, we'll also need to use, use query. Um, so we then use query hook. Yep. open up a function below your query, your um, GQL query. Okay. Um, so we'll do export default function blog. So this will be the default function that renders on. Okay. Okay. So I'll call it. Whoops. <laughs> Dang, dude. This is this. Um, Your text editor is too smart. My text editor is too smart. Um, <laughs> I use the, I don't use uh copilot. I use podium, but anyway. Uh, <laughs> All right, so then it's giving us a preview for what, what we'll do next, but um, we'll want to set a value to um, the just, result. Let me remove all of this. I'm okay. Gonna, yeah. When we use, um, if we call the use query hook on that get posts variable that we just made, then it will return the data. Um, and it actually will return loading error and data if we name those. Inside. Okay, so const equals, and then I'm gonna. So be const, and then um, open up the curly brackets after const. Okay, and then um, I want to call the before, loading before equal sign. Whoops. Okay, now. Yep, loading. Loading error, and what else you want me to call? Data. Data. Okay. And then um, set that equal to the use query hook. Yep. Use query on the get underscore posts variable. Did it guess right? Yep. Nice. Okay, cool. Okay, so we have a constant that is tapping into the use query hook function from GraphQL, right? And within this function, it has loading, error, and data. Yep. Okay. Um, so then we can do some handling for if it is returning loading and if it is returning an error. Um, so on the next line under there, uh -huh. we can do if, and then in parentheses, loading. Okay. So an if statement, and then if loading, then, then what? Return return and then in just in quotations just put loading so that'll just like a string that says loading yep um and so that's because loading returns true if the query is still loading and it returns false if it is like done and has all of the data that we need and so this will just handle if our query is taking a long time or something if it's still loading it'll show something on the screen instead of just a white screen that is going round and round. Okay. Okay, cool. And then we'll do something very similar for error. Um, so if. If error. Okay. Invoke it. Okay. Call it. All right. And then return, and return. error. Yep. And then um, if this was a real app, you might want to do something more specific with your error. Um, there's okay. like an error dot message, but um, we, yeah, we can do that if you want here. This um, here? Yep. Um, and then if you add dot message on the end of the error right there. Oh, so know. it pulls the actual message. Yeah. Okay. So then it would give a more descriptive uh, message if it's hitting an error. Also, did I spell error wrong? Okay. <laughs> All right. Cool. Okay, so then if it is not loading and not an error, then we can go ahead and return the actual blog page. Um, so we'll build out the return portion of this function. Okay, my favorite, some JSX. Okay, let me open up some parentheses. 
Um, so we have this data that was returned, but we will need to map through it because that data object is just like all of the posts on your site. Um, and we need to return them on the JSX elements one by one. Um, okay. And so we will first let's open up an, an ordered list tag. Whoops, not a fragment. Mm -hmm. A UL. Okay, you want a UL. Yep, and then inside of that, we'll do the open curly brackets and then data dot posts. Dot posts. Okay, yep. nodes dot, we're going to dot, yeah, dot, map. we're going to use the map method. Yep. Um, and so that's just kind of reiterating the structure that we built out in the query. So inside that data, we went into posts and then nodes, and then on each node had all of that data in our WP GraphQL query. So we're kind of just repeating that to get into the lower level of our query within this JSX. So you're essentially traversing the data. Yep. To get the actual single, okay, cool. Cool, so then um, for each individual thing, we can call it a post within post. The, um, And then we'll need to kind of go through the asynchronous function. So we'll do the the arrow? Yep, the arrow, and then open up more parentheses. Okay. So within here, we will do, um, we'll open up a list item inside of the unordered list. List, got it. And then each um, each item in this array will need a diff different um, key. And so we'll do key equals, and then post.database ID. Okay, perfect. And, and that then, will give its individual individual individuality. Okay, cool. Um, okay, and so then within that list item, um, we we will want this item to be able to link to an individual post details page that would have more information. And so to do that, we can use um, Next.js's link component if we go back up to the top and import that really quick. Okay, and this is coming from Next, right? Not Faust, but Next. Yep. Okay, yes. this comes with Next. Okay. Is that right, Grace? And then Next yep. link? Yep. Okay. You just forgot the from. Perfect. And that is the client side routing right that handles yeah okay cool all right so then inside of this list item mm -hmm. um we will go down one line and open up the a link component so that is capital l link and then um we'll do the, the href and set it to um a template literal with post URI. Okay, so, um, okay, uh, let me see, that's a variable. I think that's right, what it's guessing. Yep. Yeah. And then we will, inside of that, we'll just put an H2 with post title. Whoops. Is that right? Yep. All right. And then underneath the link, okay. we can also just put a paragraph tag um, that returns the post excerpt just to give a little bit of like, a, this is what this post is about so that people know what they'll be clicking on on the blog page. All right. And that, I believe, is our blog page done. Um, can so we can we fire it up, Grace? Check it yeah, out. So let's head over to the terminal and run our app. Okay, so npm run dev. Yep. This will boot it up, uh, the application, and we should be able to see it on localhost 3000 here. And let's hope we didn't break anything. So I'm going to visit the blog path, yeah? Yep. Yay! Thanks. Also, that is. Um, have you guys? Have you ever seen 
Dumb and Dumber, that favorite scene where he goes, anyway. Also, um, it's pulling out these things as an actual string and not the HTML. So, Grace, we forgot the React escape hatch. But yeah. If you want, we can go back and add that. Um, so on the paragraph tag, if you set, if you do space after the P and then do dangerously set inner HTML. And then I can just take this out, right? Yep. And then just put it as like a kind of like a, f I can cut the, yeah, it doesn't have to be a full, because I, I can make it a, whoops, whoops, nope. Yeah, that should fix um, those tags we were seeing in the excerpt. Yeah. Oh, no. It took my P away. I, it should work if you keep it like that. It was just... Okay. okay. All right. So that 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 should take off the H... Uh, the, uh, there. Okay, cool. And that's fine because, like, I mean, I know it says dangerously set, but you know it's coming from WordPress, so it's not that dangerous. Okay. All right. Um, all right, Grace, we've got about 15. So um, I think, let me just, do you have, uh, let me just copy and paste the next thing. Sounds good. Um, but cool. That was awesome. Cool. And we're pulling out the data from WordPress and rendering on a front end JavaScript application. Cool. All right. So um, in file, so what I'm going to do, Grace is what, yeah, what do, what do you want me to do next to create a link so that we can actually read the um, single post, de uh, the details of the, the title and the excerpt. Yeah, so we can just create a um, page in a new page in the pages directory um, and call it uri.js in square brackets. Okay, uri. Does that look right to you? Yep. Um, and then for the sake of time um just to leave room for questions um you can go ahead and copy copy that over okay and also we do grace and i have a repo um that will be available if you guys want to just you know mess around with what we did today okay um cool and we only got a few minutes so we can't really we're not gonna let's not line by line explain what's going on but this is basically a dynamic route um, that pretty much Grace had told me to set the parameter for grabbing it by the uh, URI. So now we should be able to go to this. And um, obviously we didn't CSS this, sorry. So there is no um, hand that um, hovers over when you, but these are clickable because we did next link. And there, there you have it. Single post detail page to a dynamic route. Cool. Sweet. It works. Okay. Yeah. And I just dropped that um, repo link in the chat and we'll put it in the description of the YouTube event. Um, so if you want to like look through that code, um, go ahead. And if you have any questions, um, you can drop them in our headless discord. Grace, let me pop the slides back up real quick and share them because there's a couple of things we wanted to kind of just... Um, leave you guys with as we're winding down here. Give me one second. Uh, pop the slides back up and let me get to the next step slides here. Okay, so. So just some next steps is um, we have a uh, main page builders.wpengine.com for all the content. Um, we've got a headless roadmap there, all the blog posts and tutorials one could need, uh, our YouTube channel, as we mentioned at the beginning, and documentation. I mentioned uh, Discord is a great way, y'all, for anything that you want to like socialize about um, in headless WordPress. If you want to show something off that you made and um, geek out and nerd out on stuff, 
And if you guys run into like any issues or get stuck on certain um, things that you're doing on your headless WordPress journey, that's a good place to uh, to be and ask not only Grace and I and Sam, um, but the entire headless community, um, most who don't even work at WP Engine, but are just stoked on headless WordPress and this stuff that they just want to help leverage and enable people to like get into it easier. And then obviously, um, so we talked about local, but um, we did not talk about really quick, if you wanted to actually mess around and see how the applications of headless WordPress work on a live hosted website, not in a dev environment, but an actual live website on the internet. Um, WP Engine's uh, hosting platform, Atlas for headless WordPress, you, you, we do have free Atlas sandbox accounts that you can essentially just test on um, all you want on a um, on a product and uh, product type environment. And then here's our um, what is oh it's our Twitter it's our X uh, Twitter uh, handles there, and we'll leave this all in the description as well, obviously in the post um, post event uh, YouTube on the YouTube channel, and then. Uh, I think this is, let's see, cool. So Decord is our pretty much our developer focused developer conference and it's happening. So, oh, cool. I didn't realize that there was, I thought it was also the same. So on March 19th, it's going to be US and APAC. And then the 21st, it's going to be EMEA. And there's the link there. And we will post this on our, on the description as well. Um, this is free and it's like, I think it's super cool because it talks about all things, not only headless WordPress, but all things going on in the um, traditional WordPress uh, community, as far as all the latest technologies and things for optimization, security, all, this, uh, all the things you would want to know uh, when creating a WordPress and headless WordPress. Okay, and I'm going to leave that there. Grace, is there anything else I forgot? Per chance? Oh, just just open for questions if anyone has any. And if not, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Well, so feel free to reach out to either me or Fran or in the Discord generally. Um, if you come up with any questions later. Um, but otherwise, thank you all very much for coming. We hope that you are as excited to get started with Headless WordPress as we are. Yep. Thanks for joining y'all. Super stoked to have you here and we'll see you on the next event. Cheers, y'all. Bye.